upcoming new moon in Aquarius might feel more like the start of the new year than January 1st. You can think of this new moon as a software upgrade for yourself. Hi, I'm Megan, astrologer, friend to the people, and here to help you with your new and full moon rituals. So please subscribe and let us just get right into it. So this upcoming new moon occurring at one degree of Aquarius is going to be occurring Saturday, January 21st at 3.53 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The waning crescent phase right before the new moon, also known as the dark moon, I don't don't recommend doing any manifestation. That is the perfect time to start setting up for your ritual, you know, getting your candles, getting your smoke cleansing stuff together, clearing your space. But in general, wait until after the actual new moon, so that 3.53 p.m. time, in order to do any intention setting and manifesting. Aquarius is an air sign and not a water sign, as the aqua prefix might lead you to believe. Aquarius is represented by the water bearer in Greek mythology and is associated with the star card in Tarot. Aquarius is also a very innovative energy. It is that water bearer. I kind of like to equate it to the Greek legend of Prometheus bringing fire. The water bearer is kind of using the water to kind of walk wash away and innovate and create anew and rebuild and then destroy society in that cycle, if that if that makes sense at all. I'm sure you guys have all heard of the age of Aquarius. Aquarius is very much associated with like technology and changing and upgrading. You probably know if you watch this channel, I love Aquarius. Aquarius is very much like a hipster vibe, whereas Pisces is more of like a hippie vibe. Aquarius is a fixed air science, and although fixed signs are very stubborn in their ways, Aquarius is stubborn in that it wants to innovate. So I know that's kind of a double negative. Aquarius is stubborn in that air intellectual way that they really want to push their own beliefs, if that makes sense. In traditional astrology, Aquarius is ruled by Saturn, and in more modern astrology, Aquarius is ruled by Uranus. Saturn is the planet of discipline, rules, and boundaries, and Uranus is the planet of new breakthroughs and new energy and innovation. So Aquarius is very much a combination of those two energies. Aquarius really wants to work in that fixed, stubborn, boundary-focused way in order to change and innovate and break through. Aquarius rules the 11th house of partnerships, technology, in the future. So this month, look to your 11th house for ideas of goals and intentions to set this new moon. Some crystals for Aquarius, and you can hold them in your hands while you meditate. You can put them in strategic places like your desk or your makeup station, wherever you want to bring that innovative energy. So some crystals you can incorporate are K2, Goldstone, Moss Agate, and hematite. Some colors that are often associated with Aquarius are electric blues, neons, and kind of like black metallics, you know, a very futuristic vibe. Now, why even manifest with the moon? Why even care when the new moon is, when the full moon is? Astrology operates on the idea that our world and universe is cyclical, and it has these very cyclical energies, right? If you accept that the earth orbits the sun and that the moon orbits the earth, you're basically agreeing with astrology, right? Astrology allows us to review patterns that happen in these cycles and use the energies that we predict are coming up and using them in an optimum way. New moons are the beginning of the lunar cycle that start with the new moon and culminate in the full moon and then go back down to the new moon. This cycle has repeated every month since, since humanity has existed. So when we work with the new and full moons, we're using energies that already are out there and using them to our benefit. If you've ever been out on a full moon or new moon, you can tell the energy is different. And that makes sense because it's in our DNA, right? Before we had electronics, candles, etc., we had the moon. So when the moon was bright, we could actually go out and do stuff and we would have energy. And when the moon was not bright, say during the new moon, we would stay at home, introspect and plan, etc. So that in general is why we are aligning with the moon. So some rituals you can incorporate. And like I said, please wait until after that 3.53 p.m. Eastern time in order to like actually manifest or bring something in. I'm not going to go too much into the dark moon, but it's not the best time to actually create something. But some rituals that you can do for this Aquarius new moon. Number one is a rejection ritual. And this can be a little bit intimidating. Aquarius invites us to really act like the most authentic version of ourselves and kind of release that fear of rejection. Like, oh, I should act a certain way because what will these people think? So a rejection ritual is you want to ask someone something that you know they're going to say no to. One example of that is like asking someone at Starbucks for $100. Something like that to help you and teach you and allow you to experience that rejection in kind of a safe and controlled way that lets you know like, all right, like I can handle this. It's fine. And it might be stressful and a little bit anxiety. I'm definitely going to cringe when I do this one, but it's a really 
really good and character building thing. That's what we're doing. Like on this channel, I do preach like moon water crystals, that kind of stuff. But I really try to keep these rituals as practical as possible. These are all rituals that if you do them every month, you will level up your life. As Aquarius is the sign of partnerships, it is a great time to collaborate with someone, whether that be in a hobby or at work. Pick someone who you aspire to be more like and work with them. You are the average of the five people you spend your most time with. So pick someone that brings your average up and maybe collaborate with them, maybe do a little new, you can even do a new moon ritual with them. But spend some time strengthening and focusing on a partnership that can help both of you. It's also a good time to look to the Aquarius house in your natal chart and see how you can give that area a little level up. So for example, I have Aquarius in my second house of money and finances. I can do things like cleaning out my wallet or setting a budget up for 2023. This Aquarius new moon is also a great time to start a habit that you have been putting off. In order to do this, I recommend doing a best self journaling exercise. For this best self journaling exercise, you can go through and write down all of the qualities that the best version of yourself has. What they look like, what habits they have, what they do, what their day looks like, everything. Really get clear and spell that out and then pick one of those habits and just do them. One of mine is I really wanna start working out before work at like 6 a.m., which is, but the best version of myself, I know she does that. So if there's something like this where you know like Dream You does this, but you're just not doing it, this Aquarius new moon is really a great time to start doing that. This new moon Aquarius is also a great time to watch something like a documentary that helps you grow your knowledge and expand on a topic that you're very interested in, or even one that maybe motivates you to like help the collective. That is very Aquarius. If you're more eco-conscious, something like Our Planet or a documentary on nature would be really lovely to watch this new moon. Aquarius rules the ankles and calves. And if you know any Aquariuses or Honestly, any other air signs, they might have issues with their like feet and ankles because they have the tendency to be ungrounded, right? That is the opposite of air, that is the ground. So just keep that in mind and maybe splurge on a foot massage or do some foot rolls and keep that grounded energy in Aquarius season. The journaling prompts for this new moon are, what does your authentic truth feel like? What blocks you from expressing your authentic truth? How do you want to feel each day? What pattern are you committed to breaking this new moon? And some tarot questions are, what energy will help me shift old patterns? What energy will support me in living my authentic truth? And what energy will allow me to upgrade my reality? I like to do a past, present, future, so that's why there's a three card spread, three tarot questions every full moon, to just give myself an idea of how I can frame the next month. Even if you don't believe in the psychic aspect of tarot, I think it's really important to do, especially if you're using a traditional writer tarot deck. There is a lot of symbolism and a lot behind the cards that you can read into, and really it's your interpretation. The mind is a crazy thing, and you might be surprised what you see in your cards. Thank you so much for everyone who commented their Aquarius place on my last video. I know a few of you let me know your Aquarius moon, so I'm going to dive into that a little bit. The moon is associated with your emotional temperament. So Aquarius moons might have the tendency to like be very outside the box and kind of feel like people might be pressuring you to be inside the box, but know that your uniqueness is one of the best things about you. And if other people want you to fit in, like that's their problem, that is not yours. And really, really just be in that Aquarius moon energy. Be that kooky version of yourself and allow this new moon to help you really understand your unique vibration. Really dial down like, okay, who am I? And not just what society wants me to be, like how can I be the most authentic and true version of myself? If you'd be interested in a reading in my next video, let me know what your Leo placements are as my next video will be for the full moon in Leo in a few weeks. Some themes around this new moon are going to be innovating, upgrading yourself, and finding that truest, most authentic version of your vibration and what you want to put out in the world. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. I I also made a five things to do or four things to do, something like that, an Aquarius season video that I will link here if you wanna check out for some other ideas of stuff to do to harness this lovely Aquarius energy. Shout out all my Aquariuses, I love you all and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.